So all of you, welcome. Thank you for joining us to our event on female leadership. We'll tell you more. So we'll be speaking with Kate, who is, bear with me all, I know all of this, but she's a senior leader at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And this discussion will be facilitated by our own head of mentoring, Cheryl Miller, who is a leader herself. She's a chartered accountant by profession. Um, she holds an MBA and she's the co-founder of the Stiletto Network. I will say no more because I will leave it to Cheryl and Kate to introduce themselves properly and tell you. So 6.35, we promise that. I'm handing over to Cheryl who will be hosting this event today. Cheryl, please. Thank you very much, Sari. Thank you for that nice intro. And thank you guys for, for jumping on on a Thursday evening. So this is going to be a fireside chat, um, fairly sort of informal and relaxed. So, you know, feel free to grab that drink. Um, keep it lively in the chat. So, you know, any comments that you've got, feedback, questions as we go, just put them in. We'll try to structure it so that we do um, specifically make time for questions at the end. So around sort of like 7.15, 7.30ish, we'll have like a full sort of Q&A, you know, kind of session. But if you want to raise questions as we go and it kind of fits with where we are in the conversation, then we'll do that. So as Darren said, I've literally just joined the board of PWN London, looking after mentoring. I have been a mentor for a couple of years with PWN and obviously I think it's a fantastic organisation, which is why I kind of um, jumped at the opportunity. Um, so I'm organising an event in about a month's time, so I'm not going to go into much about me because you'll, you'll get to hear more about me. Um, but so I'm really pleased to, um, to be hosting um, with Kate this evening. Um, so when the, the fireside chat came up and it was kind of in the diary, I kind of offered to, offered to kind of host it and, and ask Kate some of the questions that I'm sure um, you'll all want to hear. I mean, I'm, I'm always fascinated whenever we have um, senior women in our midst and I think there's so much that we can learn um, so much to kind of motivate and inspire so um, welcome Kate so Kate is Thanks. an engineer by background um, graduated from Oxford I'm not going to go into too much of the detail because we'll get into it in the in the fireside chat so Kate graduated from Oxford um, and um, you know has held a number of incredibly senior um, roles in organizations um, latterly, um, so Kate's current role, she's Global Operations Director at Thermo Fisher, um, and I always love it when, when women are in kind of operational and delivery roles, you know, and not, not, not just the supporting roles, and I say this as an accountant, having been in support functions <laughs> kind of all my life. Um, so Thermo Fisher is a global multi-billion dollar company, you know, so this is a, a meaty job, this is a, some big responsibility. Um, so Kate's been there for two years um, and before that she um, had a stint where she was group director um, amongst a, a number of other roles at Cambridge Assessment. Um, but I don't want to give too much away because we're going we're gonna to go into it in the chat. Um, but interestingly, so when I came to this as an event, it was already kind of billed as, um, you know, female power and getting things done and when Kate and I had a quick catch up I was like yeah why is it called that you know I'm not sure exactly why it's called that so should we start there maybe Kate? In terms yeah of thanks for the introduction Cheryl that's super actually I mean, it's a real pleasure to join the uh, professional women's network on this uh, on this call um, I'd like to keep it light-hearted I'm happy to share I always want to try and inspire people to to go out of their comfort zone and try a bit uh, beyond because that's what makes life really thrilling and uh, and you're right the power of getting things done is what we decided to title this because yeah. I think I was recalling that uh, in operations you know you're executing strategy you're really trying to do it in a way that engages people you build a team you kind of stretch those targets you celebrate success but if things don't go right well you know you've got to deal with that too and statistically yeah. that's gonna happen right so how do you get things done particularly uh, as a female leader, which, you know, I've been in some male dominated worlds and, uh, you know, it's whether you have a chip on your shoulder or whether you really try and, um, you know, excel in that way and, and bring people around you. And I, I get a lot of questions of that. So I thought, gosh, if, if that many people are asking me, you know, just in, the, in a colloquial and a mentoring point of view when, I, when I'm at work, you know, if I can help at all by um, giving a few pearls of my wisdom, I, I don't know, <laughs> such as they are, then I, I'm very happy to help on that one. And I guess the title that we said about this was I was working at uh, Cambridge Assessment, which um, 
uh, is an examination uh, board. It makes, uh, I was in charge of all the printing of the exams, the GCSEs, the A-levels. You can imagine it's got to be absolutely precise. You know, your GCSE has got to look exactly the same as my GCSE and not have a speck of dust in the wrong place that could be a, a comma or a decimal point and make your exam paper wrong. And, uh, you know, this is life changing stuff. People pass an exam. And then they, they, you know, their, their job prospects or, yeah, you know, or, or passport applications, uh, you know, make a real difference sort of thing. So it's really high criticality, and um, there, being Cambridge assessment, it's part of Cambridge University. There's some, you know, really big academics there and great thinking. It was a real pleasure to work there. I was, I was there for uh, five, five and a half years, I think it was, and I was invited to a meeting. Um, and I've got to admit, I was a couple of minutes late and I kind of darted into this meeting and there were there were 12 of these uh, guys sitting at, at the table and at the head of the table was this really knowledgeable um, uh, professor who was, you know, a CBE and he's, you know, and I walked in, he said, oh, thank goodness Kate is here, we'll actually get something done. And I thought, <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> and it really made me, it really tickled me because I yeah. thought, you know, we all get things done in our little ways um, and, and I don't know whether that's male or female or it's just a the type of person we are but um, definitely you know there can be some prejudices along the way and you know that can be annoying so you know let's hit those head on and really try to think of ways that we can um, make make things happen better. Absolutely I mean you know what? it's great to have that as a reputation you know in terms of in the workplace to be seen as the person that gets things done I think is quite is is quite you know all credit to you to be honest I mean there is that saying isn't there if you want something done ask a busy person yeah <laughs> bonkers but it's... well th well that is true and, I, and I'm currently at Thermo Fisher Scientific which um makes medical devices and as you say it's a it's a 25 billion dollar organization 75,000 people worldwide but it, it puts a billion dollars into research and development so it, it really yeah. does believe in its sort of mantra of you know really making the world cleaner healthier safer and uh, and I can kind of rattle off all of the uh, mission statements but underneath it all you know we make a difference from saving people's lives people take our our tests and you know determines whether or not they're, they're ill or not and what course of medicine is going to go that's quite humbling and I do use that a lot for kind of helping people to to realize what what we're all doing it's not just the same old same old job there are people at the end of the of the chain here who really uh, are depending on us and whether it's making examinations whether it's um medical devices that's quite garnering i think for everybody um and it, and it helps people realize what what the goal of what you're trying to do is is to achieve and it doesn't matter if you're male or female on that at the end of the day because you know if you've got the right support around you if you've really done that preparation before going towards a meeting and and I, I'll be honest I've, I've been to meetings where uh you know someone has taken one of my ideas and presented their that idea as their own and that's really galling actually and you sit there going <laughs> hmm, thanks a lot you know and what what do you do about that you you know if other people know in the room that that's the case you know they'll be looking to you to see how you react on that uh, I will often you know, ask a, an inquiring question on, on that. And they'll go, well, Kate, you probably know more about that than me. Go, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> so then the ball gets passed back to you sort of thing. And yeah. then, uh, you know, but you do have to do a bit of your homework and a bit of your preparation to before before a meeting to make sure you um, yeah, that you have people almost introducing you sometimes if you're new, because, uh, you know, people are, are quite touchy nowadays about not being offensive and uh, but also wanted to get their own point across and, you know, there have been a number of times when I've walked into a room and I'll be honest, people have gone, oh, yes, the coffee. Um, could I have, you know, wine with it? And you go, <gasps> and you go seriously, seriously. And and I will just hold my my um, my um pause. And I know that colleagues around me will go, actually, Kate's the director. Yeah. <laughs> and, <it'll> be, <laughs> and then then people that are really embarrassed. So then the important thing to do is to make sure they feel comfortable and, uh, uh, and um, you know, people realize their, their mistake at that time and um uh, and you can rise above it really yeah. mm. did you want to say something Darren? in there no i was just laughing yes who hasn't had that happen before it's it just sounded familiar yeah and it, it, it's a lot to kind of hold your nerve and and react like you know and not overreact necessarily in those sorts of circumstances yeah yeah it's uh because uh, uh, people will look towards you to see how you will react, particularly if it's uh, crushing. I mean, 
as it happens, I don't drink coffee or tea. And uh, that, I think that's almost a, a deliberate that I don't have to go around and kind of get it for everybody else. I'm not not yeah. trying to be rude there. I, you know, I, I drink a lot of water and orange juice and, uh, you know, we'll use that sociability in a different way. But uh, I may, maybe it was an avoiding tactic not to have to <laughs> get into that conversation in the first yeah. place. But um you know. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. And I think we'll come back to that, you know, the, the point that you made around um, some of those dynamics in, in the meetings, because I think, um, you know, knowing how to sometimes respond to difficult circumstances, particularly if, say, for example, you walk in and you are the only female, and maybe, you know, um, if you're quite young as well, I remember when I did the speed networking event for PWN, you know, it's quite a young group. So, you know, if you are in those environments, and it's in a, a STEM environment, you know, and you have some of those challenges, we'll, we'll come back to that definitely in terms of just how to navigate those spaces. Well, yeah, and actually a, a little point I learned from some colleagues of mine actually is um, if that is the case that you may be feeling you know, slightly anxious, apprehensive about a meeting, maybe there's people you don't know or what, well, then getting there early and pacing the room is good. Yeah, you can always leave the room again and come back on time, but getting there and going, right, where am I going to sit? Let me just imagine myself there and it's an empty room or even just putting your pen and paper down at what I always you know try and see what's what's the seat that's going to be helpful for me so like facing the door is a good one because then you're seeing people coming in they're not kind of coming in behind you and tripping up on your chair sort of thing um you know one that's not you know, directly in front of the uh the uh the, the chair for example but just off side so that you can catch the eye and you can really um you can really uh, help kind of some piece of it where rather than being tucked on the corner of a table where you know yeah, let, let's be honest this is this is uh again not a male female thing this is just yeah, a kind of yeah. how do you command yourself in a, in a meeting room and help get your point across um it's really important not to kind of speak with babble babble you know if you don't know the answer just be honest go that's a good point i'll make a note of that and come back to it it's um i think that honesty is refreshing rather than people uh <laughs> you know giving a bit of uh, bs and just then making a fool of themselves right so you know just go actually i don't know the answer to that but i will come back to you and then you've got to come back to them of course so yeah. <laughs> that makes sense really brilliant i can tell that we're going to get lots of nuggets out of this some really practical tips which is absolutely great um i just want to go back to the beginning in terms of some of the influences and how you got to where you are now and particularly being in a stem subject which you know in terms of the sort of gender balance you know we haven't quite achieved it yet in a lot of the kind of stem areas so going back to the beginning what were some of the influences on you and some of those kind of major turning points so how have you ended up getting to where you've gotten to in stem you know when you look back what was it that made the difference do you think right um yeah so i did do engineering at uh university and i did have a bit of a kind of eureka moment when i was doing my um a levels i must admit i was doing you know maths physics chemistry so i knew i liked doing science i like i like the sums i'm good with numbers if you like but kind of didn't really know what i was going to do with them and um i went to what they called a a women in science and engineering day uh and it was up in birmingham university i remember and it was just a kind of open day to go and have a look and and i was honestly i was thinking this is a bit naff you know this is going to be really condescending and it's and it wasn't at all actually i was with lots of like-minded females who were interested and curious but didn't know what was out there particularly and that gave me quite a bit of confidence and I thought hmm, there's lots of inquiring things here and then I suddenly realized of course that engineering is about kind of understanding how things work really being able to make a difference whether it's an environmental difference whether it's building something there are so many different strains of engineering you know there's electrical engineering uh, you know mechanical engineering manufacturing engineering and and the world of factories really uh, enticed me you know it's like um, fast moving consumer goods so my first for my first uh, job after uh, well during during my degree actually I worked in summer summer um, placements in um, Kana Metal Box as it was called um, now called Crown Packaging and it's a metal packaging firm for food cans uh, or drinks cans and you can imagine they, they, it's quite noisy factory they, you know these these uh, metal cylinders get made quite quickly and it's shiny metal that flashes past and it is 98 percent male workforce yeah um and i just got a real buzz out of this thinking ah you know we, we can make a million cans a day here and this is a throwaway item that uh, people take for granted but if we get it wrong we're going to poison people yeah uh, so we've got to get it right. And of course, everyone, you know, 
we don't get it wrong, right? So, so you know, it is taken for granted. But the the precision in the kind of number of beads, as they call it, on the on the side of a if you've got your bait bean can, the kind of ridges down the side, they're called beads, and the radius of those and the number of those and how much they're bunched together. You know, there's a huge amount of uh, uh, engineering and science that goes into that, and that was just fascinating to me. I thought, wow, you just take it for granted, um, and by having those beads. Uh, you can get away with having thinner metal, which makes the whole can cheaper, and it means it's uh, less um, less uh, uh, harmful on the environment, etc. And and metal is 100% recyclable, etc. So I, you know, I, it opened my eyes to this, and I thought, you know, you can kind of feel something inside you that gets excited about it, and you know, we really shouldn't start talking about tin cans because I could go on all night about <laughs> about the joy of it. But that's the thing: if you find something that that uh, that entices you. Yeah. Going into factories that, that, as I say, you know, uh, was all male on the shop floor. That, that's just the way it was, right? I had, I had my um, quick fit, uh, fit a boiler suit type of thing too, uh, and I would go up to the engineers and say, "Can I, um, can I understand how how this works? Can you show me how it works?" And you'll be surprised how many people are really happy that someone's interested and yeah. curious, and you're not being judgmental. You're not, you know, you're just asking. You know, I want to learn. Um, and I had a placement up, I remember up in uh, Liverpool, in Aintree a factory, um, and uh, I walked in and they'd, uh, they'd, they'd had a poster on the wall saying, you know, Kate is uh, joining us for three months and, you know, welcome to the site, that, that sort of, you know, thing. And um, I walked into this workshop and there was a, a very large gentleman who said, Kate from Oxford, them stuck up gits up that well, I'm not going to even try the accent. Actually, it was a Liverpudlian <laughs> accent, of course. But uh, like you walk into the room and they're saying stuck up git. Oh, great. Yeah. What do you do? You know, and I sit there thinking, well, I'm either going to turn around and never go into that room ever again. Or and what I did do is I walked up to the gentleman and said, I'm I'm your stuck up git from Oxford. Can you tell me where the canteen is? And, I, and he went, well, it, well, it's actually a, it's our break now. Do you want to come too? I'll show you. And from then onwards, we just hit it off. And, he, you know, I was interested and curious and there to help him at the end of the day, of course. And uh, and then he effectively, you know, promoted me to others saying, actually, she's all right. You know, <laughs> well, <laughs> I assume brilliant. you said something like that. But <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I can and, and, you know, and everybody that's listening, I can I can literally see and hear the passion for what you do, which I think is so important. Um, you know that just comes through um, so much where where did your passion for kind of like the sciences and engineering come from you know how, how where did that start for you yeah so I, I think people's dads have a lot to do with it you know my my father was uh, was very uh, keen on making sure I could add up properly and not get swindled if I got the wrong change and things like that you know he wanted his daughters to to not get railroaded so you know I yeah, I think I, I must have become quicker on the numbers uh, early. And then, of course, then you have that nice um, fulfilling prophecy that the, then you're interested in this and you want to learn more on, on that way. And I think it's the same. Much. I have two daughters uh, myself who are, who are teenagers and we were really keen to teach them to read really early because then they could learn themselves and then uh, le learn from a book themselves. And then it's a nice fulfilling prophecy that they wanted to uh, um, learn more and would never be lonely and the, you know they would be able to help their friends and that makes them popular so, well you know I don't know if this theory is true but it, but they seem happy and I, I was very happy too so so yeah my dad had a lot of influence on 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 the saying actually it's okay to be an engineer uh, you know and <laughs> he, he had in his pocket a, a, a brass um uh, a, a brass bearing that I'd I, I'd made and you know would kind of proudly show his friends and I kind of wince now I think about it because uh, you know it, <laughs> I'm not sure I know how to make it now but I manage people who are engineers now uh, and I don't use the engineering so much um, per se but uh, that's that's necessary to have that um, skill behind your behind you. Yeah I mean I just think certainly you know particularly with STEM and where we've got you know the absence of um, you know, kind of women going into those fields, it is important to have those advocates and people that will actively kind of push girls to kind of realise that those are viable options, you know what I mean, even though they don't see that many role models in the field. Yeah, yeah, and I think when in my early career, you know, um, in those factories with the, with the, with the tin cans, for example, um, you know, I did try and adopt a mentor in that way, you know, I'd look at 
you know, the technical director and uh, go, yeah, I want to be that one day, you know. And so I would make sure that I would bump into him to say, uh, you know, can, can you tell me a bit about, you know, how you started here? And of course, again, love, people love talking about themselves, don't they? So he would he would find someone that was interested. And if, if you're half bright, then you're going to help him achieve what he's wanting to achieve. And then he'll start saying, actually, this this lady's quite good. She'll help you out on this and and take you under their wing, actually. And, and I had that a number of times, actually, um, from places. And, and I think it's really important to be clear what you want. You know, I had a goal that I wanted to be a factory manager at the by the age of 30 um and that was kind of I wasn't sure how I was going to get there but that looked fun and uh you know metal box in its 75 year history in the UK had never had a female plant manager and I was 31 actually when I when I got that first uh, first role I uh, had a couple of maternity leaves so I think that that, that counts yeah. um uh, yeah 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 and the thrill of walking into a site I'll, I still remember it today and sort of makes me tickle is this huge site thinking oh, this is my site I'm accountable for it yikes and and I don't know how to run any of these machines or uh, like and all that self-doubt that you have and you think but all of these guys have been here longer than I've been alive yeah. and they do know how to do it. So, you know, how do I help them with some mm -hmm. guidance and some vision and some goals of, you know, what is it we need to do? And, you know, I, I very much adopted, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to say what we need to achieve and you're going to tell me how we're going to get there and then we're going to make it work all together. And I'm quite a visual manager on that. I'll have a lot of, you know, visual charts and kind of success stories and then when we hit that number get yeah, that number again <laughs> when we hit that number let's um let's celebrate and uh, you know using the red and the greens on the boards you know not it doesn't have to be screens it can be just kind of post-it notes you know keeping it low tech right. um, hey do you want to just go on mute We've, we've got a budding we've got a budding stem engineer there i think fantastic um, <laughs> <laughs> you know all about stem let's just touch you touched there on um self-doubt um and we talked a little bit about this so let's just touch on you know um those feelings of oh my gosh can i actually do this you know whether we call it imposter syndrome or whatever it be how has that kind of read its head in your career and how have you dealt with that yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up, actually. The imposter phenomenon was a real revelation to me, actually. I um, I only heard about this uh, about four or five years ago. And I was reading something about, you know, the imposter syndrome, uh, where you, where, uh, where women, in particular women, but actually it's men as well, uh, to some extent, but much more prevalent in women, really don't believe in themselves and don't believe that they've got there on their own merit that there must have been some freak thing that you know they've managed to scuffer them way their way into and I read that and I thought that is me I always think oh I only got it because dot 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 or they must have felt sorry for me or I was the last one left and or they were just trying to fill a quota you know that sort of thing and then you sit there thinking what is wrong with with me why do I doubt that uh, I'm actually quite good at what I do aren't I oh well maybe maybe I just got away with it this time or maybe it's because I you know everyone else you know had fallen asleep during that that lecture that I did better you know and and it's really it's really debilitating it's really like yeah it can hold you back yeah um and I've really thought about that like it was a I, I remember reading about that imposter phenomenon and literally you know sort of going home on the train at that time and um and just going right this is not just me thinking this, there's lots of people who think this. Mm -hmm. And however kind of, you know, however many qualifications you have behind you, however many times people say, oh, you're doing a great job, you know, you, you, you're undermining yourself. So how do you get out of that? How do you get out of it? Well, I've really thought about this actually, because uh, I, I did do an MBA with INSEAD two years ago. And um, uh, INSEAD in Fontainebleau has, um, it's, 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 uh, big uh, USP is is bringing uh, lots of different nationalities all together in one place so you know I was in a class of 100 people with 29 30 different nationalities it was absolutely fascinating and of course some nationalities um, are slightly less British when it comes to being understated and they will just say things they will just blurt it out yeah uh, and it's quite refreshing actually I have to say and I remember 
on that uh, first week of that INSEAD MBA, someone saying, you know, you need to, you need to, you know, click out of that imposter phenomenon. You're just good at being a general manager. I would work for you. And I went, wow. And this was a guy that I'd read his CV and thought, blimey, this, this guy is amazing. I can't believe I'm even in this class right against this, you know, right with alongside these guys. And I, and I was really uh, humbled by that. And I thought, actually, everybody is human. And the only way to get through all of this imposter phenomenon is to actually push yourself out of the com- out of your comfort zone and go into uh, groups where there are really inspiring people that uh, that you can you know that you think you're going to be looking up to, and then you join with them, and you think actually I'm I'm alongside them. I'm not looking up to them. This is this is great. We can all learn from each other. Everyone is at that same level. Um, and it takes some guts to go out your comfort zone. I, I'll, I'll be honest, even doing this webinar with, with you is out of my comfort zone. I don't, I don't naturally volunteer to, uh, to uh, you know, go online like this. But, but I thought, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Hmm. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, you know. It, it, it's so important, honestly, Kate. I mean, you, you know, I, and I've come across lots of people in my career, you know, at sort of C-suite level. Um, but I mean, you, you know, your resume and having spoken to you before and now this evening, I mean, you are the real deal. <laughs> you, know, <I'm> doing, <laughs> you know, clearly, you know, you do get things done. It's 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 kind of quite obvious. And so it's interesting that that even you would kind of be experiencing sort of some level of self-doubt. Um, I guess it's reassuring because we're all human. Um, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, a, a really important thing is, you know, we have two ears and one mouth, right? Yeah. So when, when we start off in new... Uh, new areas you know listening twice as much as you're talking is really important and and perhaps when people are nervous or or trying to prove themselves they can they can talk too much right but you're listening twice as much as you're talking means that people are oh, what's she got about her? is she taking it all in and then you know you're not you're you're taking in what's uh, what's happening around the group you're People are thinking, hmm, she's a thinker, she's, she's uh, assessing it, she's listening, she's taking it on board what, what we're saying. And, you know, things might not be right, not be, might be wrong, might, might be right. You're trying to really give that confidence that, that it's only going to work as a team. And I think, I do think one of my, my best skills is, is building a great team of people around, around me, uh, around whatever it is we're trying to achieve, so that everyone is clear about what bit they do. And what yeah. they're going to excel at and if i'm the leader then uh, and it all goes uh, wrong well that's that's my problem i'm the leader i take the fall for that right but if it goes right it's the team and if you have that attitude it's the team success then everyone wants to pull with you and make sure that they don't let you down in which case it's it's going to succeed whatever comes your way <laughs> Definitely. I mean, one of the things I was going to ask you about, uh, which you touched on in terms of your MBA from INSEAD, was was kind of what what led you to wanting to do that. Because obviously, you're already incredibly successful. And um, but actually, before we get onto that, before we get onto the MBA, uh, what I'm picking up on is you've got you've got some incredible um, kind of like interpersonal and management skills and kind of you know maneuvering through an organization and getting things done where did you pick up all of those skills you know were there were there specific mentors along the way is it just literally by watching well I them? well I looked yeah I watched uh, yeah. I I looked at people that I uh, admired um it, uh, uh, it could be like a dozen different people and go oh, I like that little bit that he did there and I oh I just like the way like even if you're walking around a room you know where do you put your hands if you put your hands behind your back uh, and they're right up, right up against your. Oh, we're on video, aren't you? If they're right up against, you know, your your yeah. um, elbow, then you're looking all kind of uptight. And particularly, I'm thinking about a noisy factory environment where people yeah. can't hear you anyway, so it's all visual, right? Or if you're looking kind of walking with some good stride, and your arms behind your back, just hand in hand, and you're actually, okay, pre-COVID times, putting your hand out to uh, shake hands, then you know you're taking that initiative and walking with some pace. I mean. You know, if this is a professional women's network, you know, good shoes do matter, actually, because it helps you feel confident in in your stride and your walking. I think, you know, I don't think this is just me. Right. But it's like you're looking at your shoes, you're walking with it. You feel kind of hundred hundred million dollars, don't you sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and it helps you with that poise to to, to feel confident. 
um, even if you're not inside. Inside you're screaming, right? But outside <laughs> you're just trying to give that air of, I'm just going to listen and I'll, 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 when I say something, it'll be really helpful and it'll be inquiring, it'll be supportive. And then people go, huh, she's someone who's gonna help me achieve what I need to do. I'm gonna go with her, like, in which case, you know, him or her, it doesn't matter, does it? It's like you're you're really looking out for for people, and and I don't I don't actually bring in too much of the kind of personal stuff about people's families and things like that. Uh, uh, you know, obviously that's really important for people's happiness, but you don't yeah. want to back, go go talking about that all the time because you're at work for a reason, yeah. So it's acknowledging people have you know really interesting families and uh, home life and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we're here to get a piece of work done and. Uh, you know that's the joy for for achieving that uh, and giving people the credit for that so I mean we were just talking before we started this this webinar you know I've just hosted um, Thermo Fisher Scientific's uh, divisional board at, at one of my sites um, and uh, and I really enjoyed that actually uh, but there's a lot of preparation to make sure that it, it looks smooth right <laughs> um, and whilst I am the, you know, the site lead for the for the whole of the, the site and the global operations director, uh, and, and clearly it's my show, as it were, I did about um, only 10% of the standing up in front of everybody else. I was fronting all of my team and, and I, I coached them. I made sure they felt confident about it. Everyone saw everyone else's slides beforehand. We we did some tweaking and then said, you, you can do it. You can do it, Becky, go for it type of thing. And then Becky would stand up there and she, you know, we'd give her a little kind of, wink in the eye and of course all the directors from the divisional board could see that I was trying to really bring these the strength of these people forward and they thought hmm whatever whatever happens on this plant it's going to go it's going to go well uh well that's the impression I was trying to give anyway so <laughs> hopefully that was successful but you yeah. know all the team were there and they were all pumped up to kind of make it make it happen and that means that we'll get investment we'll, we'll get the resources we need and uh and the recognition that I, that I was trying to trying to get for this particular plant and hey that's fun isn't it you know yeah. serious business but you'd have a bit of fun <laughs> along the way right <laughs> yeah I think that's perfect you know your 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 kind of description there of watching people you know watching other successful people around the organization and how they maneuver and how they carry themselves you know I, I remember a story um kind of seeing somebody through a glass office pacing around a room before a meeting and he was actually um I found out going through the main points that he was going to make in a board meeting and I thought wow so people don't just go in and wing it do you know what I mean people actually think well I, this is what I need to kind of get across so um, yeah I think you're, you're right picking up on, on what other successful people are doing in an organization is a great way to learn definitely yeah it is true and, and one of those um one of the things they uh, they taught us in INSEAD which I remember at the time was absolutely cringing mm. uh, but I do do it if you go into the bathroom before you have a big talk or a big speech and literally do that looking at the mirror and go I am good at this you know I own this space is yeah. the is the phrase which I, I have to say saying it now just sounds as I say cringing enough <laughs> very American. You, yeah it is but if you're by yourself and you just go come on I yeah. own this space you know at the end of the day I might not have all the right answers but I've got all the information I, uh, that, I that I can make a decision on at the moment yeah. and in which case that decision is the best decision I can make at the moment uh and if I and again if I don't know the answer I'll go and find it yeah. but you know really really helping people you know give that piece of confidence to work with you rather than feel afraid that you're going to stab them in the back or you know and I've, I've worked for people that you just don't feel safe with you don't feel psychologically safe with you think at any point they're going to be you know rubbishing you well who wants to be with someone like that so you know being really careful not to do that yourself and to be very very uh, honorable to people um you, you know because they may not agree with you that's fine <laughs> but you know try and find out their point of view and why that why that is the case in that case <laughs> I, I love that I think you know guys if you take one thing away from this evening I think just that in terms of prep when you're going into those challenging spaces you know because sometimes things like you know board meetings and projects and program meetings can feel quite challenging and sometimes you feel as though you're getting into get going in to get a battering um but yeah doing that beforehand just kind of look in the mirror I own this space that's that is perfect. That's perfect. So what, what was it that made you um, actually embark on your um, MBA, given that you, you'd kind of already reached the pinnacle, you know, so, so why do an MBA? What's, what was the, the want there? Well, um, well, I was at, I was at Cambridge's assessment and I'd been there 
three, four years, um, they had an appraisal system where um, I'd, I'd achieved the top 1% appraisal rating that had never been given to directors in seven years I was told and again I was like wow really like and as you say I was kind of like oh I must you know it must have been a fluke or whatever I was completely you know I you know we must have just statistically wanted to make sure one one got given out in seven years rather than actually maybe I was quite good yeah. at what I did like sort of thing. Yeah. and uh my boss at the time um was was quite close to retirement actually and uh, he was quite honest with me he said I, I want to keep you uh, until I retire, <laughs> so I'm going to suggest you do an MBA because that'll keep you going, keep you going, or not, not that you. And I was thinking, oh, all right. He said, but aim high, you know, aim for, you know, uh, uh, an, an internationally recognised one because you can do it. So as you say, it was a bit of mentoring from him and believing in me way more than I believe me. So I went off to the. I remember going off to on the Eurostar to the interview in um, in uh, Paris, and I met a few other ladies who again, their CVs were just stellar. And I was like, oh, you know, they were COOs of pharmaceutical companies or a CFO of, uh, of, of you know, startups and, and tech businesses. And I was like, why am I standing here? Uh, and yet when we were having the nibbles uh, and the drinks, you know, you just sit in there. And, and I remember this lady, uh, a lady from Lithuania, and she came up to me and said, what, what do you think? What do you make of it? Will you apply? And I was like, well, I will if you will. And she went, okay. And I, and I was a bit like, well, this is mad. You know, like there was no way she wasn't going to get in. She was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I now in hindsight discovered that she felt the same about me, which felt really funny. So we had almost this little pact about, right, right, you go for it, I'll go for it. We can always turn it down. <laughs> like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, um, and then we both got in and we really, we really in, enjoyed it there. And, uh, and that was, you know, just... I was um, I was just after, just turned forty actually, uh, and I have to say I wish I'd done it when I was kind of 37, 38, which is the average age for uh, executive um, MBAs, because it's like you know you do all your education that takes you takes you for the first twenty years of your career, and doing an MBA right in the middle of your kind of like with another twenty years to go if you like was a really good boost just yeah. to be able to go right you know different ways of thinking, looking at giving yourself some time and some space to really you know, not be worrying about running around your kids and kind of, you know, uh, you know, tidying up your house. And uh, I did used to go off to the MBA sessions. Uh, they were one week every six weeks um, uh, for a year and a half. I used to go a couple of days beforehand just in order to compose myself and kind of get into the mode of, right, this is a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of investment and I'm away from my family. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to really think about you know what do I want to do next and where do I want to get to um and kind of be kind to yourself you need to give yourself a bit of space for that um and that's when I then joined Thermo Fisher afterwards so yeah I was really pleased about that <laughs> yeah. so it almost became a bit of a stepping stone into your next sort of career move I guess transition yeah, it, it opened my eyes to what else was out there, if you like. I, I felt I'd kind of reached as far as I was going to go at Cambridge Assessment. Um, very much enjoyed it, but, you know, it's a, it was a, a not-for-profit, £400 million um, turnover place. And, of course, Thermo Fisher is, you know, several orders of magnitude bigger than that. Um, and I didn't know anything about the pharmaceutical world or... or and, and, you know, there's that thing that about with um, job descriptions when when women look at a job description and men look at a job description, you know, men, men, I, I don't know if it's true, but it kind of sound, it resonates with me anyway, that's, you know, maybe men only feel they have to have 60% of the qualifications and they'll go for it. And women feel they have to have 98% of them qualifications. But it's again, very I was true. it's very it true. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was amongst so many other people thinking, actually, you know, having the right attitude means that that is important. I'm, I'm running some plants right now, microbiological plants we're making covid tests we're making um extraordinary um medical devices and testing kits and i can't even pronounce them i have to say you know uh but it doesn't matter because there are experts there who are microbiological microbiological i can't even say it uh, experts and i my contribution is the uh, operations and the leadership to be able to really get everyone uh, on board of what we need to achieve and and, and get all the metrics so you know, I would never have thought it would be safe to be able to join a, a business where, where I didn't understand the product, uh, you know, 100%. But I learn something every day. And my contribution is something that someone else can't contribute. So 
hopefully that gives everybody some confidence that they can make make a make a difference yeah i mean it's a great testament to the transferability of skills and not necessarily limiting yourself to you know maybe the a specific industry that you've been in for you know kind of five ten years or something because you've always got skills that you can bring along to another organization um i want to talk i want to come back to something that you talked about right at the top of um the chat which was around um, having people in the, I always call it having people in the room that will speak up for you when you're not there. So yeah. having like allies and sponsors, etc. How do you go about getting that sort of support in the workplace? Yeah, so again, it's about doing your homework about, you know, who is going to be at a meeting if, you, if you're going to be in a sort of situation, what sort of information, uh, what level of information do you want to picture that? I think a lot of people get that wrong, actually. And, and, you know, they're so in the woods or they really want to kind of uh, demonstrate how hard they've worked. Well, that's not the point. It's not how hard you've worked. It's what people want to hear, whether they're, whether they're at the sort of helicopter level or, or whether they're wanting the sort of strategic view. So really pitching that uh, level to the audience that you're going to be at is, is, uh, is important. Uh, and then, of course, you know, who's going to be work in that area? I will often just be very blunt about it. I'll just phone up, you know, a couple of days beforehand saying, you know, this meeting on Thursday, uh, I'm thinking of raising this, what's your thoughts about it? And then you can hear what their thoughts are, which again, people like to give their thoughts. It might actually help influence and shape your own thoughts, but it also means you're sharing your thoughts so that when you go to that meeting, you know, a number of times people have said, yeah, I think Kate agrees with that. Didn't you have something you, and they'll help bring you into that meeting, you know? Uh, if you're having difficulty um, having your voice heard, uh, uh, for example. Yeah, that's that's a really good um, that's a really good practical tip. I'm, I remember um, I had a conversation once with somebody, a mentoring conversation. They were talking about meetings where maybe you constantly feel as though you're being talked over, or where you just have got the nerves whereby you literally don't speak or you don't feel that you can contribute. How can you get past you know those kinds of nerves? How can you prep yourself to be able to kind of speak confidently in a meeting so I, I, again I was giving some sort of literally in front of your bathroom <laughs> or the bathroom mirror <laughs> on that situation there I think you've got to make sure you're bringing something valid to the conversation you know again not speaking for the sake of it because you'll just get you know talked over because that's not relevant um, you can use visual um management rules on the, like have something written down and go actually does this help or when you're listening to other people if people aren't listening to you you can grab the pen the power of the pen and be the one that's let me just make a list of this on the board and then you're actually controlling what's going on the board actually which means you're picking up on everybody else what they're saying mm -hmm. Uh, you may not be saying anything yourself, but you're picking up on what they're saying and you're almost commanding that situation. I, I'm just going to make a summary of this or I didn't quite catch that. You know, Bob, what did you say on that one? OK, how do you spell that? I, <laughs> you know, um, you know, that that uh, if you're if you're getting stuck, you've got to kind of physically move out of that that position. Otherwise, people are just talking across with you. It, it, you know, you're you're in a rut in that case. Mm -hmm. So you have to break out of it, I think, either by doing something different rather than just rather than just chirping up because that's not going to help at all you just have to do something a bit different let yeah. me just make a note of this and can I just make a list of this and you you said that bit earlier oh, and re repeat what repeat what someone else might have said also helps get you into a conversation you know um uh, so you know uh, Mark that was interesting what you said uh, on da la 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 I also think da da da, -da. and that's so you you're you're kind of helping a create a an alliance uh so that people want you to be talking because you're supporting what they're saying and then building on your own point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to be opening up for questions very soon, guys. So if you've got any questions, start to put them in the chat um, right about now and we'll, we'll kind of get into those. Um, so any from yourself, Kate, any kind of like significant lessons that you've learned that you would kind of impart to us? You know, what are some of the big some of the big things that have, um, have really sort of made a difference for you? Um, in in what way? In your professional career. In my professional career. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you know, don't try too hard, but definitely if you say you're going to do something, you've got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if, uh, if, if someone senior is asking for some information, you know, obviously 
put it to the highest priority that you're going to do that and do a good job with it try and add a little bit of value to it so you know they might be asking you know what percentage was you know the on time in full figure yesterday you know 95 percent is probably the right answer but if you say it was 95 percent because we missed on the five percent on this one and the previous day it was 98 percent and we're expecting 90 98 percent today oh okay <laughs> so you know it's uh uh, you know try, trying to be uh useful in that way yeah. uh, i think um but uh uh yeah i think uh i think if you say you're going to do something do it yeah. and do it do a bit extra you know i i do use this mantra quite a bit that i do serious business but you've got to have a bit of fun along the way i mean we're all going to be working till we're 70 at this rate aren't we so you know we really have got to have a bit of fun away if you want to have people people can good people can choose where they're going to go right so yeah. if you want them to to work with you then uh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know make make it have a bit of sparkle in their life right yeah. <laughs> That is a sobering thought. We are going to be working till we're 70, guys. So just <laughs> buckle in. Um, and have you got any regrets in terms of, you know, any particular career moves or, you know, things that you wanted to do in your life that you never had the opportunity to do? Any regrets? Um, well, I am quite a half glass full person, actually. If, if uh, something doesn't go right, I generally do try and find a silver lining <laughs> to it that you, know, that you learn to move on probably my I had an early regret when I didn't apply for a role because I was a bit like there's no way I'm going to get that and then somebody got it who was really not very good and I thought I could have done a much better job than that <laughs> and I was a bit like damn like and, and I got a you know sort of a short sharp shock on that one uh so the following time um uh, a role came along and I remember thinking there is no way I'm going to get this because a far more qualified uh gentleman was, is is going to get that uh, and he did However, the point about applying was meant that I was a waving the flag and saying, I'm interested, uh, I'm interested and I'm interesting sort of thing. And what really came out of that was um, I didn't get that role, but they made almost a, a new role for me saying, we didn't realize you had cer certain talents there and we think you'd be really good at doing this. And we're going to you know, form a role for you and then work alongside that person. And I was like, hurrah, you know, and and that I hope it would be a really big takeaway of, of this session today is, you know, it's a bit kind of no guts, no glory, you know, yeah. give it a go, give it yeah. a go. What is the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. You might not get it. You might look a fool or it might be fantastic uh, and, uh, and bring things that you would never expect just because you've waved that flag and you've given yourself that opportunity to have a voice. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and I must be honest, actually, when when I now in, have internal vacancies within my own plants, uh, if, if internal people um, apply for that as well as external, I will always, uh, well, nearly always uh, bring the internal um, candidates in for interview, because then it's a training session for them, male or female, actually, um, to help them realise if they don't get the job, it's because it's the job is much, much higher. And how mm -hmm. how could they get there? And if um and that's quite a lot of investment to do that but actually people you can be surprised as well um you know people who may not present well or very very nervous but they're super sharp and they're really good at something they just yeah. need that little opportunity to be liberated and if, if i've had that in my career i'd like to make sure i give that to other people in their career as well definitely and talking about opportunities and you know the future of stem and um, women in stem in particular have you seen um have you seen any change that makes you more optimistic about the future of of kind of women in in stem roles in particular yeah yeah so when i did my engineering degree um there were four women out of uh, about 110 of us and it's funny enough none of us sat near each other <laughs> it's like it was almost this kind of unwritten sort of like we don't want to all club together sort of thing yeah. uh and uh, and I really remember doing that. My final year project was about sort of jet engines, and there were some super smart brains who went on to be, you know, professors and do PhDs and things like this. Um, and one of them wrote on my card just as I left university, "You're the first female that I've ever worked with." And I was like, oh, "What a what a sad life that is! That poor guy." So, sort of, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. And now I discover uh, that you know, engineering, for example, has you know, twenty five to thirty percent. Uh, female applicants and, and there's a bit of a critical mass there and I, I, I sit there thinking you know it's really important actually to have women on the selection board to interviews um, partly because 
anyone coming to those interviews then sees that actually women in senior roles um, is, is a thing, right? But also when you're actually with those interview panelists, um, you're asking intelligent questions and also, um, you know, taking a view from what you've just heard. It, it helps your credibility with, you know, colleagues at your same level as well. Um, so, you know, that diversity actually helps bring in diversity, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Well, there is that, there's that saying, isn't there? You can't be what you can't see. Um, and as much as I think there is an element of that, I also think that things like mentoring, you know, plays a big part in kind of being what you can't see but definitely you know if you're bringing people into the organization and they can see other women in those roles yeah it does it makes it more 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 of a possibility okay have we got any questions um guys for kate you know with um we're almost we're almost out of time we have we have questions yeah, um so i'm going to take them in the order in which they came we have some time to do that so nupa has asked to you kate how do you urge people who are yellow sunshine rather than blue which is insights profile to get things done so basically how do you manage the different characters within your teams well, it's really important to have a good spread in a team, isn't it? Um, you know, you're not covering all the bases if you don't if you don't uh, have have people who are going to say no. You know, I have a number of uh, a number of teams actually where I've deliberately brought in someone that you know is kind of whatever you say they're going to say oh, that's too difficult, that's never going to happen. So thing because actually you want to understand um, you want to understand uh, you know. In, in the population as a whole there will be always doubters and actually the best advocates are those that you manage to turn around and get them to be on board uh to then also sell it and promote promote ideas as well um i'm not sure if that answers the question but of course you know you know the red yellow green and blue you know it's really you, you know you if you have a a, a team full of reds you, you're doomed right so uh you know being confident enough to be able to to recruit people who are literally different from yourself or uh, it means that you're covering all bases to make a very powerful team. Agreed. Anupa, did you have any, before I move to the next question, did you have any? Yeah, I guess uh, if, if you don't have the opportunity to recruit, but you're given a team where most of the people are yellow and, and you are one of the blues and having to kind of herd like cattle and, you know, move them in the direction that you're supposed to, any tips on how best you would do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, again, the visual management stuff is important. Uh, I do a lot of sort of putting pictures up and handwritten lists. It doesn't have to be polished and, and uh, uh, you know, laminated. Uh, I'm just thinking of an example, actually, that in my tin can days, uh, we, we started bringing in some infant formula milk cans. Yeah, so I I infant formula cans are, uh, baby milk cans are, you know, really expensive compared to, you know, baked bean cans, right? And because of that, you know, we needed all these uh, gentlemen to kind of wear beard snoods and hair nets and white cotton gloves and wipe down all the lines with kind of alcohol wipes. And they were like, this isn't helping kind of run the line faster. You know, it's like, I, I've been here, you know, 40 years and you whip a snapper and you're trying to tell me what to do. And, you know, like this sort of thing. And so I said, well, hey mate, bring in some pictures of your your grandchildren. Let's put, let's have a board up of everyone's grandsons and, and, and grand, children uh, 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 girls and boys um, and that's the reason we're doing all these hygiene standards it's not to be able to kind of make cans and kind of get them out the door it's because we're feeding our children's okay. children yeah. uh, and I, I remember thinking this is either going to completely bomb <laughs> or it's going to go really well and it went really well and everybody wanted to show off and bring their grandchildren's pictures of, and Ooh. everybody then embraced all the standards as well about kind of yeah I'm going to wear the cotton gloves because I'm on the I'm on the special line with the baby food you know <laughs> so thank you yeah that helps thank you so instead of actually reading the questions I'm just going to call on Lisa you had a question about resilience please ask <laughs> um, so I know resilience is an area that I need to work on myself so have you had to work on your resilience and if so what have you done <laughs> yeah it's it's hard isn't it Resi re resilience um it, it is really important because uh, your knocks in life I mean are they going to knock you down or are you just going to go okay I accept that didn't go well you know grab it with your hands hold it tight you know acknowledge it actually and go yes this is not good. I'm upset about it. It's really, it's really hurting. And then you go, 
and now I'm going to put it in a box and I'm going to let it go because I'm going to learn from that. And next time it won't hurt so much. Mm. Uh, and next time it won't happen actually because because you're you're stronger for it uh, rather than constantly being in the shade of, oh, you know, everyone's going to think this. I mean, pe people don't. I mean, d days move on and it's another day. Tomorrow is another day. Yeah. Thank you. Juliana has a question about fear. Do you want to ask that, please? Yes, hello. Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much. What an exciting end of the day. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, um, what is the scariest moment you had in your career and how did you overcome it? Uh, and uh, of course, I'm referring um, to something that I went through. I had a new job one and a half years ago in the uh, contract manufacturing business. And I remember I was so scared to the day before I had to start. Um, I literally uh, almost had a panic attack. And um, yeah, have you have you had that uh, as well? And how did you overcome it? Right, Over, overcoming, you, you, it's a really good question that, isn't it? You know, breathing is so important. <laughs> you know, allowing yourself to take in deep breaths and let the oxygen go to your, to your head. Um, and I write a lot of lists actually. When I get anxious about things, I, I write lists about kind of, uh, you know, um, what's gonna help? What, what, what am I actually afraid of here? If I've got a tough decision to make, um, and you're afraid to make the wrong decision, then you can do all those kind of pros and cons and go the for, you know, the for and, uh, and against for these things. And then it's such a relief when you've actually made the decision because you've, you've chosen one. And one of my little tactics is that I'll go to bed, having made the decision in my mind for the, you know, A or B, I'll, I'll say, right, I'm going with A. And I'm going to bed tonight and I'm going with A. And when you wake up in the morning, if you're kind of, oh, do you know, I'm not, feeling, <laughs> I'm not sure I should have done that. I should do so the following day. You do the opposite and go, right, I'm going to go, right. I'm going to pretend I've made the decision. I'm going for B. I'm going for B. And it's funny how it kind of, it kind of works. You following day, you go, yeah, actually, I've got a kind of gut feel here. This is, this is the right thing to do. Um, so, you know, when I'm, when I'm driving the car, I do do the old sort of shoulder movements. I do do the kind of, <sighs> Right, I can do this. Uh, four breaths are, are really good, and if we if we've got to, uh, time to do four breaths right now, go, you know that first <laughs> one, you're going, yeah, I've done it now. Two, you know, and third one, you're going, well, here we are, and then you finally do the fourth one, and it, and it puts you in a much calmer zone, and then it, it helps other people be calm as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because you're not going to be perfect, you're not going to get everything right. Accept that, yeah, but also accept that if you're good at what you do you'll be able to flex for that as well. So when, when something doesn't go right and the curveball comes your way, uh, that, that you can go, right, I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna respond and now I'll respond rather than just get into a flap about it. Don't know if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> it does, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have, I'm gonna move along quickly. We have a few more. I'm going to call on Sandra. Sandra has, I think it's more of an observation and a question about what we said earlier about the female male confidence. So Sandra, did you just wanna ask your question? I'll try. I'm already a little bit tipsy because you made me drink my wine. <laughs> oh, so. good, good. I'm so That's all right. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, <laughs> I'll read what I wrote. So yes. I don't get, no. Go the ahead. Is, um, I work a lot with executives and help them in their career management and job search. And men usually, when they see a job, I can only confirm that they're like, oh, see, I. I fulfill this, this, and that. We should apply. I'm like, no, you're not ready yet. Whereas women, they literally, they, they're ready to go 90%, 95%. They say, no, no, I still need a year to prepare because I'm missing this one point. And we're like, no, you're amazing. You're competent. You're a CFO. You're a CEO already. You should go for it. And my colleagues and I, we often struggle convincing really amazing women actually to go for it. How, what would you tell them? I mean, of course, we tell them a lot of things, but what would you, your take be on to get them to get Yeah, well, well, I would always say to take the pressure off, you know, okay, maybe you won't get it because you haven't got that tiny 10%, which, as you know, we, we all know is totally relevant, right? But, but say, okay, yeah, accept. Maybe you won't get it. So just use it as a training ground, you know, use it as a, as a practice ground. Um, and then next time when you do find one that's 100% and nobody ever does, right? But you know what? Then they'll go into that um, interview 
with thinking, actually, I don't have to try too hard. I don't have to push too hard because I'm not expecting to get it, but I'm going to use it as a practice ground. And I'm going to, and then funnily enough, they'll come across with a lot more confidence because they perhaps maybe will believe in themselves more. Um, and I really would uh, advise, you know, people to, 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 you know, you do need someone who's kind of uh, making you feel good, right? Uh, and telling you that you're, you're not as bad as you really think you are. It's like, that, that's, that is important actually. Um, and to focus on the things that they they do bring to the party, you know, and have those examples ready uh, with stories. <laughs> we have managed to trick some of our female clients to just say, oh yeah, you just go for a trial run and then they did get it. But it does bother me um, that women don't believe more in themselves. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is the impulsive phenomenon, isn't it, at the end yeah. of the day? So uh, maybe it's, it's what makes us, you know, good at what we're good, uh, good at other things, right? Because, yeah. you know, we're maybe more cautious in those areas. I, I don't know. But that's, you know, that takes all, takes all the whole tapestry of people in life, doesn't it, to, to get things that way. But I do have a little cartoon uh, that I have stuck on my wall that says no guts, no glory. And when I sit there going, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I think actually when I'm on my deathbed, will I feel, I, will I will I regret not giving this a go? You know, so you do it the other way around saying, actually, will I, will I regret that? Oh, if only I'd done that. And that actually spurs me on quite often to go, right. I feel really scared about this. I'm really apprehensive about it. I'm not going to, it's not going to work for me, but, if I don't do it, I'll forever regret it. And I remember about that job as well, about that person getting that job over me. And I thought I didn't even apply. I should have applied. At least I would have known, you know. So I, I you know, who wants to regret? You know, regret's not a good thing. So <laughs> here, here. Kate had a question for you on work-life balance. Kate joined us with the youngest member of PWN London. Kate, would you like to ask your question, please? Hello, yes. First of all, sorry about that, but it kind of leads into my question. No Sometimes... apologies needed, please. <laughs> Sometimes that work-life balance feels really hard. Um, do you have any tips? Yeah, so um, great name, Kate, of course. It's uh, <laughs> fantastic <laughs> talk for Bob. Um, work-life balance is, uh, is tricky, isn't it? Because uh, did you say you had a young one? Yes, a little one-year-old. <laughs> Yeah. So when I come home, I try and be mummy. You know, I'm mummy. I'm wife. I, I really try and be quite uh, rigid about the I'm now going to go into my working zone and now I'm in my home zone. So, uh, yeah, you, you know, I think when my young my when my uh, six year old saw me putting on some makeup, she went, oh, mummy's going into her work zone. <laughs> so uh, you, you can't spin all the plates all the time. You just turn yourself mad and you feel that you're, you're letting everybody down. So, you know, my, my children, for example, know that they can text me at any time. That's absolutely fine. But if they phone, it must be important. and I will drop everything for them because they're phoning, because when mummy's at work, She's in her work zone sort of thing. And when I'm at home, I get criticised if I pick up my, my work mobile because you're now in home zone. So, you, you know, I think it's actually, you've got to be kind to yourself. You've got to actually be quite mi military to say, I am in, now going to do half an hour's work. Leave me alone. I'll get it done. I'll be back at half past six sort of thing. Uh, and then you've got to come back at half past six and not let it drag on. Uh, otherwise, you can't come you know it's not compartmentalizing your life you 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 end up being all things to all men and, lose, and losing losing it actually so uh uh yeah be kind to yourself and compartmentalize actually i think would be my advice thank you daniela please over to you you had a question on well ask it <laughs> yes hello good evening from germany um Hi. um Yes, so I think that it was at the beginning of the very inspiring evening uh, when you mentioned that um, you entered the room and somebody said that um, now Kate is in the room and we get these things done. So um, I have the same, um, apart from many similarities of your uh, past uh, with mine, um, I have the problem that I don't, can't get... Um, very well out of this trap because oh. I am there to to fix things. Um, um, I am responsible for a specific area, and uh, I am not. Um, how say they don't support me to move in a different area because they need me there. Oh. So um, uh, right. this is okay. where it's very 
difficult. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a this is a really, really important point, actually. It's very unfair to be held back because you're good at what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's what a lazy manager would do, right? A lazy manager, she's really good. Just, uh, you know, it makes my life easier if I, if I leave. But actually, you need something back. And the best thing to do is to grow your successor, to make sure you have what I call a, a right hand person. Yeah. And that right hand yeah. person means that you've got someone to bounce off. Uh, it also means that they are learning. Uh, and it means that actually they want your job is marvelous thing because then you can um try and blossom up uh well, you, you, it's easier for you to be released to do the more interesting things and it doesn't have to be someone who's actually working for for you it's it's a right hand person that's a you know a colleague in crime if you like that you can uh, <laughs> that you can um that you can bounce off uh, as it were it means i mean and when it comes to work life balance as well it means that when you go on holiday you don't come back to you know 400 emails on a, on a day yeah. sort of thing <laughs> because uh, someone else has got you back but if you keep saying yes to things actually you'll keep getting asked to do things so sometimes you have to say no I'm not going to be able to do that until next Thursday or oh, so it's actually the way around to saying yes I will do that but it won't be done until next Thursday and people mm. well I thought you were going to do everything you do everything <laughs> all the time well actually on this one if you want it it'll be next Thursday oh okay However, you can write, ask my right hand person and they can get it done and therefore, ah, there we are. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and it, ta it does take some guts to say no sometimes, but this is the thing about being kind to yourself and saying, I'm just gonna run myself ragged if I do it all the time. So I did open saying, you know, if you, if you do something, do it properly and make sure you deliver it. But that means actually being helpful to, to define when you're gonna do it as well. So, you know, thank you for that. Thanks for the opportunity. I won't be able to do it until Thursday, but I will do it well when I do it on Thursday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, thank you. So, do thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, Kate. Do we have any more questions? We're going to be winding down now, maybe one or, one or two more. I know I have one. Um, does anybody else have something they want to say or just ask Kate or Cheryl? before we... I think I've got one. Please, Milena. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think I'm still formulating it in my head. So bear with, <laughs> it's coming out. Um, but I've personally found recently that I feel I was a lot more adventurous in job, jobs and all sorts of like just jumping for opportunities and, you know, previous years, like younger years and then recently sort of becoming, kind of going into the adult stage of you now looking to buy a house or if you have a house you have, have a mortgage and then all of a sudden you're a little bit more scaredy cat in terms of jumping into a, a new opportunity and sometimes you kind of really need that so it's more you've got more to lose haven't you yeah 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 but it's I don't know it's it's a balance of it's altogether more important that you're actually quite happy where you are because it is now your lifehood and that's what you're going to be doing until you're 70. <laughs> well your your manager is your biggest influence isn't it you, your manager is your biggest influence on your happiness that they value what you do and they make you feel special uh you know they do there's that old adage you know people don't leave leave companies they leave managers don't they so uh if you have an inspiring manager that you can feel you're learning something off that you believe in and you can learn from then you know people do stay a lot longer i stayed at cambridge as i say because i had a, had a manager that believed in me and that, that helped me but i if i was tracking my tr career trajectory again i should have left after three years you know but i didn't i did my mba and i'm really happy i, I did I, I did that because i had a good manager but uh yeah. okay joanna did you have something you wanted to say i s no okay kate i had a i don't know if it's a question or an observation at some point you said something about in terms of your team your view was i'm taking a quote i forget what we were talking about then you said it's your role to just set the vision you're not going to tell your team what to do you're going to tell them what we need to achieve and then they tell you how you do that at what point did you learn that? Because one of the struggles that I have is, and I don't know if it's ego, is that I have to get involved in everything. Um, it's not that I don't trust my team, 
But because I also then have to answer to my leadership team, I just have this anxiety and I'm the one normally passing on the mess. I get this anxiety that I, I need to know what everybody's doing and I need to really go into the details. And then I find I'm working 16 hour days and I'm exhausted because, so at what point did you get the confidence in yourself and your team to be able to say, I'm not even diving into the details. We're achieving this, you go find the solutions, bring them to me and I can corral anybody without well I guess I guess it's a bit like we were saying earlier when you're looking at other managers I uh, I would not want to be managed by a micromanager I would not want someone breathing down my neck the whole time yeah. and so therefore I don't want to do that to other people uh, and, and if you spend a bit of time with people and understand what they are good at then you can go right I'm going to leave this with you and if you've still got that as kind of slightly obsessive side and you just need to just need to find out just what it, you can always do a kind of pre-meeting with them before the big meeting just run run me past your ideas and what what you're going to what you're going to bring to this uh, party and then after a while you you don't need to even do that little pre-talk on that one because you know they're going to come to the uh, the meeting and, and have the psychological safety to talk openly um yeah i mean i i I, i'm a self-confessed uh control freak too i i like to know everything is working perfectly but you will just burn yourself out you will and and nobody will want to work for someone who's kind of a burnt out or b breathing down the neck so you've got to suddenly make that twitch to guys this is what we need to achieve and this is a tough ask but all together we're going to make it and i'm really really try and be clear about the accountability of you know, Bob, you're doing this. Maria, you're doing this. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite like that, but it's like, but again, I do it. Kind of, you know, I do it with the, you know, with the visual management of kind of like, right, who's going to take this? Maria, you're on that. Okay, and if you need any help, we're all here to support you. And absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, um, but you are going to do this because <laughs> your name's on it. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then kind of bring that together, and it makes life a much happier situation. That um, that. Uh, that you're you're trying to set that vision Mm. uh, and take people out of their comfort zone i mean it's scary for people to come out of their comfort zone what they're doing at the moment works so why would i want to change it and that's why you're giving them that safety net saying if it goes wrong it's my fault Mm -hmm. because i'm taking you out of the comfort zone that's fine but you know what it's not going to go wrong because we're all going to make it right and it'll be the team that makes it right and little little wins add up to big wins um um when, when you do things like that yeah Absolutely. Well, that was my question. I certainly don't want ego involved in being the last one to ask the question. If there is anybody who has <laughs> one more question that they want to ask, so they want to ask, please. Yes, we have one from Joanna. Joanna, do you want to ask that? This will be the final question. Or do you want to ask it? Or I can read it. So. Joanna says, how would you describe your personal brand and how important is it for others to understand your brand? How do you express it? Oh, and she apologizes. She she couldn't speak. Um, So, okay, my personal brand. So I did get described once as an enthusiastic achiever. And I thought that that's quite good. I quite like that. I like I like to win. Of course I do. I like to I like to uh, hit those goals. And I, I, I think I bring a bit of energy for, for that. Uh, and enthusiasm has got to be genuine, hasn't it? Because people can see straight through someone who's putting it on. But, uh, you know, that little mantra, as I say, about, you know, making sure you're doing something that really is meaningful. Uh, so it, it's pretty serious, but making sure it's a little bit of fun along the way can, can, can make things... Um, I think I hope my personal brand is very much about bringing people bringing people on board and making them feel safe to be able to achieve some really quite dramatic uh, and, and dynamic situations successfully um, so that you have that pride. Okay, thank you. Kate, thank you. I'm just going to hand over to Cheryl for a quick um, to finish. But before we do, Sandra had a suggestion that she put forward. She says we're a small group and here for a common reason. So what about inviting everyone to share the LinkedIn profile if they, of course, want to connect with one another? So um, how would we do that? I I think, uh, oh God, this is where technology fills me. We Anyway. Cheryl, I'm going to give that to you, <laughs> and we can wrap up as you think about that. Thanks, Erin. Yeah, if anybody wants to share your LinkedIn profile, I think if you just literally go onto LinkedIn now, click on your own profile. Yeah, so Sandra's done it, and just 
like copy and paste the link and drop it in there you know if you want people to connect with you um that's a that's a perfect way um so yeah just in summary really thank you so much kate i think this has been so informative um i think you need to do more of this <laughs> I think you've got so much um, for, you know, men and women to learn from in terms of how to to navigate um, the spaces really. Have you enjoyed it? Have you enjoyed the chat? Uh, I have. And and I'm trying to practice what I preach here. I'm out of my <laughs> comfort zone doing something like this. But, you know, thank you for making it easy, Professional Women's Network. And uh, and thank you, everyone, for all your, your questions. Uh, d delighted. Delighted. Been fabulous. I'm going to take away so many, um, so many things from that. I'm giving people literally just 30 seconds to put their um, their profiles in. In fact, what we can do is we can one of us can do a copy and paste, and we'll just kind of grab any of the profiles that go in. But um, yeah, I'm going to take so many things away from it. You know, no guts, no glory. Um, I own this space. I think are going to be two of my favourites. Um, Darren, did you want to say anything just to close up? Just thank you all. Thank you for taking the time. It's Thursday evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kate, for making the time. Um, yes, it was good to have this discussion. We will be having another event next month. So please look out for that. Please join us. But this was lovely, yeah. Kate. We thank you. And Cheryl, thank you for the wonderful hosting. I wish you all well. I wish you a lovely weekend ahead. And I hope we see all of you again, whether it's on LinkedIn or um, or some other time. Kate has said she'd love to add hers. It's not working. Well, bear with you. I won't close the call. I won't close the call for a while. So keep adding your LinkedIn profiles and we can share that. And in terms of next steps, we'll have a communication on this. Um, we, we'll connect with you. Sandra, you're enjoying that wine. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Wishing you a lovely evening. I will leave the call open for a while for those who just want to drop in their LinkedIn profile and we will, yeah, if anybody just wants to get that. Thank you all, ladies. Have a good Thank evening. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye, Bye. Bye Kate. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 That was a good idea, Darren, to just leave, leave it open. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Sandra, thanks for joining. That was really nice. I am copying the LinkedIn profiles. I hope everybody has that. I'm going to keep. Kate, okay, thank there. you so much. It was, um, yeah, it was, yeah. Really well, thank you, Cheryl. It's, uh, you're an absolute professional at this, actually. <laughs> because as uh, long as you get someone started, they can keep going, can't they? But <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> No, it was brilliant. It was, it was very easy. I found it very easy. And, you know, it's been and, and I've been out of the, I guess, corporate corporate space for a few years. And so, you know, kind of listening to you and hearing it just draws it all back. I used to one of the roles that I did actually was um, I was what they call like almost like the executive support manager to the CEO, a bit like a kind of glorified bad carrier. Um, so I so I sat in a lot of board meetings and was yeah. taking steps through to some board meetings and things. So so much of what you said kind of resonated in terms of how to get things done, particularly in boardrooms as well. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. 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 Well, I think uh, you know natural enjoyment of life does does uh, exude out, doesn't it? But uh... <laughs> yeah. the, the CEO that I worked for actually, he said um, he said. He said, am I paying you just to have fun? You know, he said, you're having way too much hey. fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so important to have fun. Good. Super. Um, well, thanks so much for the invite and uh, yes. thinking of me, actually. So uh, I've uh, ticked one of my New Year's resolutions off to uh, to have a go at doing this. So I'm very pleased. <laughs> and you, yeah. you quitted yourself very well. Thank yeah, you. Thank you oh, so much. Thanks very much. Good to see All everybody. Right. All right, I'm going to close the call now. If anybody still wants to quickly drop something in, Sandra, lovely to see you. Juliana, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank and you. yes, have a good evening. Will you, will you be sharing the recording at all? Will you? Yes, we will. We will. We'll send a communication on this. Um, but yes, my, my my husband and family were on strict instructions. They weren't allowed to listen in, and otherwise, been too embarrassed. But <laughs> I, I would like. I would like to. Uh, would like to share it with my children. Okay. Okay. Um, we will yeah. um Rebecca will be in touch we will we, we, we will mm -hmm. okay all yeah. right bye. thank bye. you bye bye good evening bye bye cheerio bye, bye.